Hello, my name is Lewis, and I'm coming to you with the Sunday School lesson for, for August 27th. And this lesson is entitled, Called to be Inclusive. And the lesson is coming from Acts chapter 10, verses 19 through 33. And our key verse is verses, verse 28. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing. For I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom you seek. What is the cause wherefore you are come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that feared God, and of good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house, and to hear words of thee. Then called he them in, and lodged them. And on the morrow Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him, and fell down at his feet, and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, You know that this is the, it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company, or come unto one of a na another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying. As soon as I was sent for, I ask therefore for what intent you have sent for me. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon a tanner by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. Immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this lesson. We thank you for all that you are about to share with us, Lord God. Open up our minds, understanding, O God, of your word. Give us, O God, a clear direction. and Give us a clear understanding of what your word is telling us, O God. Help us and lead us, O God. Give us, O God, guidance through your scripture, O God. In Jesus' name, we pray, O God, and we give you glory and honor, O God. And Lord God, help us to be better witnesses, O God. Help us to be more, Lord God, hearing. Lord God, help us to be more discerning. Oh God, not only of your voice, oh God, but of your will. In Jesus' name, amen. So we begin at the first verse, which is verse 19 of chapter 10. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. And so what vision he was referring to is also recorded in Acts chapter 10, verse 10. And so it says that he was hungry and he didn't eat anything. And then all of a sudden he uh, fell into a trance and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him. And it had been a great, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and led down to the earth. Almost as like a, it almost in my mind's imagination looks like a tent that was spread and it was closed around him. So that anything that was around him with him under this tent was enclosed and so we see wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping th <coughs> things and fowls of the air and there came a voice unto him rise Peter kill and eat but Peter said not so Lord for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean and the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now at, at the, this point, after it was done to him three times, 
Peter doubted in himself what meant what the um, vision actually meant. But then all of a sudden, three men came, and it says, "Doubt in himself, and, and when he, when he should, we, and which he had seen should mean." Behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. And while Peter thought on the vision, the spirit spake unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. And so we see the same thing that's going on in this particular lesson that happened in last week's lesson. God is orchestrating something. He is moving, um, moving in the in the mind of a person getting their bodies to move as though they are chess pieces on a board and he is inspiring them and giving them knowledge that they could not have otherwise known unless it was by the spirit and so we see that the gifts of the spirit are in manifestation and that the gifts of the spirit are for in the end at after all is said and done is for the furtherance of the gospel is for the increase of you know of believers is for the increase of the kingdom and so we see that the spirit god jesus is speaking to peter at this point and then um we we jump down to verse 19 today's lesson and it says that three men seek thee this is what the spirit told peter now these things happen so that this rendezvous this meetup this this uh joining together could happen and so we saw that last week with ananias and saul saul received the a message while he was praying and then that's another thing that i kind of remember from last week's lesson is when ananias asked the question well haven't you heard about this person? You know, Saul's been running around killing folk, running around uh, uh, persecuting the church, your church. And he says, uh, go ahead to him for he prayeth. That was one of those things that kind of stuck out in my mind. And in today's lesson, we see the same idea with Cornelius. But we're going to continue for forward. So the vision is found in verse 10 through... You can stop at verse 16, verse 10 through 16 in the same chapter. Arise, therefore, and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. And so here's the thing. In verse 20, the words doubting nothing, I actually looked it up and doubting comes from the Greek word diakrino, which means to discriminate or prefer. And so, in essence, the Spirit told Peter to not, to not use pre-preferences, to not discriminate before you know what's going on. I have sent you to these, this man, and these men are coming. Don't discriminate. I want you to understand the vision, but I'm telling you out, outrightly, don't discriminate. That's exactly what doubting nothing means in this context discriminate nothing discriminate not discriminate no one so for i have sent them so in essence is inferring that the lord is telling him not to discriminate against these men even though they are gentiles they are romans and so verse 21 says then peter went down or well, then peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom you seek. What is the cause wherefore you are come? And so the men, you can find that these men are found in chapter 10, verse 5 through 8. It says, Now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon. This is Cornelius instructing the men or instructing uh, that men be sent to this place in Joppa. So to find Simon, whose surname is Peter, for he lodged with Simon the Tanner. He gave him his name, his address, where he can be found. The same thing happened with, and all with, with Saul as far as Ananias. He gave him his address, Straight Street. He gave him uh, what, what, uh, what house he was in, the house of one Judas. And his name was Saul, Saul of Tarsus. 
Ananias was given well, ex well, explicit and specific instructions on who to go to, where to go to, and then at that point, what to do. Verse 22, And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God, and of good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into this house and to hear words of thee. And so these men uh, had taken the message that Cornelius had given them and told, and told them and was told to say these things. That Cornelius the centurion, uh, and they probably added this. I don't think Cornelius said, oh, tell him a just man sent you. No. They probably added this knowing uh, the type of man that Cornelius was. He was of great reputation. And so these men went ahead and told the uh, Peter exactly who sent them. And it was a man that feared God and had a good report among the nation of the Jews and was warned from God and exactly what happened to him. So Peter now knows that Cornelius was given a, a uh, vision as well or heard from God as well and so it says that he will send thee into this house and to hear the words words of thee now underline the words in words of thee because later on in the lesson we're going to find out you know drawing back from something Jesus said in the gospels um you know that something that can help us with understanding which words or what words, in fact, may have been preached. Verse 23 says, Then call he them in, and, lot, and lodged them. And on the morrow Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And so he allowed them to stay overnight, and he, he made a plan that the next morning he would go and visit the centurion, which would be in Caesarea. On the morrow after... They entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them and had to get called together his kinsmen and his and near friends. So he was anticipating the arrival of the great Apostle Peter, this great man who he saw in the vision that the Lord was going to send his way. He was waiting with faith that this man would come. And so indeed, the Lord sent Peter and in his faith was executed. Verse 25, And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Now, we know we're not, we, we ought not to worship man, worship a woman or man or any creature or anything other than God. And so Peter knew right well as well. And he told Cornelius, he picked him up. Peter took him up saying, stand up. I myself am a man. And so Peter knew his place. He was very humble, knowing the truth. But even in his all of his humility, and this, this says something about all of us, even in our humility, even in what we know in Scripture, there may be something that God has not opened up to us. And so we can't right away just you know knock off these people who call themselves christians you know on on the other side of the harvest who may believe in something else who may believe in something extra that you may ne never have looked into and so it's always good to know all the doctrines but you know know the truth but know all the doctrines and know where they come from and so it's good just to just to be be a student of the word and a student of what's out there. I'm not telling you to, to engulf yourself and, 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 and get all deep into, you know, all the religions of the world. It's not necessary. But when, when something like this happens, remember, when they stoned Stephen, all the, the, people, the people that were preaching the word in Jerusalem spread out into different places, different locations. And they had not heard yet that Peter would see this vision or that any Gentile would actually be, you know, forgiven of their sins and receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we see that these things are in the works, that Paul is now, you know, being 
he's being discipled and if I'm not mistaken he's being discipled at this time in another location so that when the time comes him and Barnabas will get together and preach to those that were scattered the Jews and also the Gentiles because now at that point later on in the future at that point they will now have known that the that on the Gentiles as well the the gift of the Holy Ghost is poured on them just the same as in Acts chapter 2 and so Cornelius met him and fell down his feet and worshiped and, P and Peter took him up saying stand up I myself also am a man verse 27 and as he talked with him he went in and found many that were come together so Peter knowing talking to this man knew that at this point oh this is this is bigger than I thought this is not just for one man. This is for one man and his family and his friends and the people he worked for and work with. All these people are influenced by this man. So at this point, Peter knows he's about to let, let off a pre, uh, sermon. And he said unto them, you know how that it is unlawful, it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God has showed me, now underline that, but God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. As a matter of fact, in the vision, it was animals that were brought to him and, and the, the Lord spoke, spoke to him from heaven and told him, Lord, uh, Peter, rise, kill and eat. And Peter said, I, I can't eat this. I never ate anything like this. And I'm not going to eat nothing like this in the in the. And the spirit or the voice that spoke to Peter said to him, call nothing that I have said, you know, that I have called, called you to eat unclean. And the same thing goes for, you know, more, more spiritual understanding of that is that it wasn't about animals. Obviously, it was about humanity called no human being unclean or or um, or common. And so I looked up the words common and unclean. Common comes from the word koinos, which means ordinary. And this comes from the idea that it's ceremonially, um, you know, separated. Something that is not good ceremonially as, as of according to the law. And so ceremonially, it's profane, defiled, unclean, unholy. But then you have the word unclean. And it's, 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 that Greek word is akathartos, akathartos, which means impure, ceremonially and morally lewd and foul. And so as a new Christian, talking about Peter, as one who, who walked with Jesus and talked with Jesus and now has received power from, on, from above, from on high, Received the Holy Ghost, was baptized himself, all these things going for him. Even Peter, and even in his humility and all his knowledge, had to come to this understanding that there's something more, more to this faith than meets the eye. Whereas I thought because I was Jewish that I had part in this, in this gospel. But now it's not so. It's not about just me being Jewish. It's about me being a man. And any man that God has called, whether he be Jewish or a Gentile, meaning anything but a Jew, Jew uh, if God called you to preach to them, they are ceremonially okay to preach to, according to the spirit that is in Christ Jesus, in which we walk and now we talk and we also preach a message. And so going back, you know, a couple of lessons now, we, we heard call to witness. And in every one of these lessons coming up to today's, today's lesson, there is a, a um, there is a um, point of view where unity comes in and inclusivity comes in. Meaning that there are many types of people that this gospel is for and that once we're included into this fold into Christ 
that we are unified in Christ. So unity is important and inclusivity is important. From the inside, we ought to be unified. And then as we are expressed on the outside, we should be more, um, more inviting. I should say that better than inclusive because some people will have it in their minds that they, they ought to be inclusive with the world and how the world do things. And that's just not what is being said here, not what is being preached, not what has ever been taught. And so the Bible tells us to come out from among them and be ye separate. That only means that because God has drawn us out by his word. And so now we hear the word again. And so remember, I told you to underline verse 22 words that these men wanted Peter to come back to Cornelius and preach to them the words that he has in his mind and his understanding. Because now whatever words that Peter had, it was necessary for this Gentile to have. And so therefore came I unto you without gainsaying, promptly, without contradiction, meaning I didn't doubt this time around. Uh, initially, he doubted what the things meant, but then the men came and then he was all for it. And then as, as he gradually went through the process, it began to dawn on him. By the time verse 28 comes, he says, but God have showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. And so he says that he came, well, therefore came I unto you, talking to him directly to Cornelius now, without gainsaying, as soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore for what intent you have sent me. And Cornelius said, four days ago I was fasting. Now there's, there's going to be three things that Cornelius says that's very important. Cornelius was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. And also remember, verse 31, and, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, that's number two, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Excuse me. Um, so we had those three things that are also mentioned in Matthew chapter 6. And you can look it up yourself. Matthew chapter 6, verse 1, verse 6, and verse 16. Dealing with uh, pr uh, prayer, um, dealing with almsgiving, dealing with prayer, and dealing with fasting. And how we ought to do those things in secret so that our Father can reward us openly. And so these things are, were done of Cornelius and they were known of all these people. But Cornelius, his faith and his, his honor to God was so profound to God that he wanted to, to make an open show of Cornelius and bless him as one of the first Gentiles to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Send therefore to Joppa and call hither, this is verse 32, Simon, whose surname is Peter, he is lodged in the house of one Simon a tanner by the seaside, who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. And so he already knew that, God's, that God was going to send Peter, a man, to speak unto him. What? What do we normally speak out of our mouths? Words. And so whatever Peter was going to speak, it was going to be the words that were necessary for Cornelius to hear and for all those people to hear. Immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. And so going back to the words that were preached, when we look at John chapter 15, and just a quick thing, real quick, verses 3 to 4, it says, Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, and as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you, except you abide in me. So, we see that the idea of cleanliness was already, was already uh, put upon Cornelius, and he was waiting for the word of God. So the word of God cleansed Cornelius, and when they heard the word, I'm talking about all of his crowd. All of his people received the word 
and received the Holy Ghost, just like they received in, in Pentecost on Acts chapter 2. And so we see that God is doing a great thing that is not just for the Jews, but is also for the Gentiles. And looking also back to the other uh, lessons, breaking down barriers. This is something that was already in the works, but this right here came from the Apostle Peter, came from the top, one of the top men. And also we have the idea of call to preach that we're not we're not stifling the gospel to our people or to our color and our our tongue or whatever but we ought we ought to preach to everyone so this lesson culminates the last 3 last 4 altogether that we ought to be all inclusive and inclusive does not mean that we that we all give in to the world and become like the world but rather the other way around that the world is freely embraced within the confines of the word of God so that when they receive the word and they obey the word they can um, they can do the things that are in the word so when we preach the word they can hear it and receive the Holy Ghost it is as simple as that if we're not preaching the word then you you trying to reach the world for whatever reason you're doing doesn't mean anything. When you're preaching the word, you're preaching the gospel. And when I say anyone can preach the gospel, I mean anyone can witness. Anyone can be in their corner of the earth, on their, their corner of the building, and be able to speak to any person, single person or group of persons, color, uh, any color, any tongue, whoever. You should be able to speak to anyone and be able to, without looking at their face, doubting nothing, being able to go ahead and preach to whoever, no matter how short or how tall, no matter how fat or how skinny, no matter how, how whatever, no matter the deformity, no matter the, the, the sickness, no matter what they got on their body, no matter their smell or stench, we should be all inclusive, embracing everyone because God has not called any human being that we're called to preach unclean. It is open season for the harvest. And God is saying the harvest is truly plentiful, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the labor of the, the, the uh, Lord of the harvest that he sent for laborers into the vineyard. And so we need to be inclusive in our preaching and our witnessing and break down those barriers in Jesus' name.